Actually, now that's why I'm really going live now. So we are officially live on both platforms. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. If you're joining in for the first time, welcome to the family. Please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continuous love and support that you are showing me. I do apologize for the delay. We had load sharing from five to seven. So a couple of minutes ago, I could not connect because the Wi-Fi was not, you know, active yet, yeah, for lack of a better word. But yeah, we are here now. I do apologize for the, the delay. And we're just going to go straight into it. Today, we're, we're going to be talking about the reasons why um, churches protect pastors, reverends, bishops who are abusive in the church. Why is the church protecting abusers? This is coming after the recent series of videos that I've been posting from the video that I posted this uh, morning or oh, that went live on YouTube this morning, which is allegations against um, Bongani Koza, who apparently used to abuse his wife from the um, evangelical, Ev evangelical Presbyterian Church of South Africa, the East Rand branch to be precise. Um, this man has been accused of, you know, really, really being abusive towards his wife. And a lot of people actually did come forth and said, we experienced the abuse. We saw the abuse firsthand and the works. And now the lady is late. But um, five months at, prior her passing, she actually did go back home. But apparently she was really, really badly injured and she had like internal injuries. She had support, you know. Like she had to, to have a support of a pillow and all that stuff while she was still, you know, alive. And then five months down the line, she passed away. And the family of the lady who passed away, who is the, like the first lady of that church, of that branch, are saying that um, the internal injuries which were done by this reverend are actually the result of or they feel like they contributed to her sister's passing although other people who are in defense of the reverends are saying that this woman passed away because of asthma because she's been asthmatic and the ladies um the sisters rather um you know arguing that a lot and the fact that the the, the i saw uh, from linkedin there's a doctor by the name of hunzugani poshia kosa her kosa is with an s at the end who put um you know like a concern on on her LinkedIn saying that she's worried that she sat with these people and um, according to the report which was presented this guy was taken through counseling before he was reinstated to become the the you know to minister in the church but the counseling was only given to the men and not the women and there's nothing which details that he has actually you know corrected himself before he was reinstated because even after him being reinstated he was still very much abusive towards his wife which is the reason why the wife was ch he chased the wife out with the kids and he was not even supporting the kids he was not even taking care of the kids right so all of these allegations were you know squashed for, for, for a couple of days until we gave it attention. I saw even during the day the sisters were live with Uncle Solomon trying to, you know, publicize the news even better to see if we can get help for, for, for the sisters as well. I see Zolega, Mashiani is here, Lerato, Mukhezi is here. I really appreciate everybody who's connecting both on YouTube and on TikTok. And I would love for us to have, you know, because I was saying during the day, today my spirit has been down the whole day. Actually, honestly speaking, uh, one of the reasons why I cried since last night when they were mentioning me on the videos and this morning when I was thinking about it and I was like, my spirit was just, I was just in prayer mode, but I was down the whole time. And the reason why I was so down was because I speak to first ladies of churches almost every single day. You get what I mean? There's always a first lady of a church who's going to come to me and tell me their frustrations and tell me their struggles. And it really, really hit me very, very hard to realize that actually one day I could wake up and one of the people that I speak to on a daily basis could be the ones who are facing this that I'm seeing right now. You understand what I mean? Because um, it's, 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 it's very realistic. I also made an example with another first lady that I spoke to like a couple of months ago who said to me that her frustration is that first of all, she does not have anybody to speak with in the church because, you know, everybody will mock her. She's the competition. You know how... Um, you know how competitive women are, you know? And obviously because of her struggles, she can't 
vent to anybody in the church and as a result she's all alone so she found out that her husband who is the overseer of the church was actually cheating on her with the worship team leaders and the works and every time when she's at the church she's crying people think she's crying because of the holy spirit but you know she knows that she's crying because of you know the stress and when she tried to approach the elders of the church and tell them that listen this man is cheating on me this man is abusive towards me this this and that what the elders said to her was that this man is stressed and men don't like women who make noise a lot so when not because you make a lot of noise you know you are frustrating this man that's why he's cheating and then when what did you do to him so literally yo the church is, is is ungovernable you know like literally people get away with a lot of things in churches and um that's just the emotional you know abuse of it and imagine if now now there's physical abuse which is now accompanying all of that and in the case of our sister that i was talking about in question that we're speaking about during the day who is um uh, makoto you can see that it was really really that bad because if somebody was able to move from one church to another church and they turn up like they're literally these people are literally like i said during the day it's like that they're, they're behaving like ostriches where they are hiding their heads in the ground but the butt is out there because you can't solve a problem when a man is abusive towards his wife in this church the community is up is 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 complaining about that you take that man you moving to another branch when he gets there he's abusing his wife again instead of you solving the problem you take the man you moving to to another branch you are literally making this person a problem everywhere he goes and also because people don't want to be accountable you know for the behavior that they have it's it's always you know it's the environment you know the most bizarre thing that somebody once said to me was you know the environment where you are staying right now a lot of people have divorced so maybe that's one of the reasons why you are divorcing no everybody must be held accountable for their behavior you know it's got absolutely nothing to do with the behavior of a person we already have somebody who's online i i did invite the sisters of Mahotso, who is kifense and zo um but they're connecting i believe that they're connecting on the youtube side if you ladies do have tiktok please do uh, hop over to tiktok because then then you will be able to be audible if you'd like to join to share with us because i do have a few things that i would like us to talk about but i feel like we need to raise an awareness in a sense that the root cause that i want to get to by the end of this live is what can we do differently to make sure that we protect we educate first ladies of churches specifically to say listen when you see signs like this 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 and that you better run for your life and you never look back how can we support first ladies of churches how can we protect them how can we you know give them a helping hand to make sure that they actually run and never look back when they see signs of abuse starting to show up we have priscilla on the line priscilla would you like to um speak to us my darling hi um yes how are you i'm good thanks how are you my love I'm good. My heart is heavy. Mm. Um, and I can only imagine what um, this lady's family is mm. feeling right now. Yeah. Um, if they're on the live, I just want to pass my condolences first and uh, pay respect to her. Um, it's really sad that she probably didn't even know that one day these conversations were going to be had and she was going to be the example. Mm. You know how sometimes when we are in situations, we always see an end and we don't see this being the last fight that we're ever going to fight. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know where to start. But I think um, I'm going to give a professional opinion okay. as a qualified social worker who has um, dealt with abused women and children and I'll also give an opinion as someone who was on quarter to being Umam Fundisi I guess um, who experienced the behind the scenes of um, church and who experienced church head I think I'm going to try and approach this topic from this particular direction. Okay. So essentially, I think that um, if we look at it from a biblical perspective, right, you will notice that uh, in Revelations, when 
I think it's in the book of Revelations when um, the churches are being addressed. There's different types of churches. There's the church that is burning for the Lord that will not tolerate sin, you know, that does not tolerate sinners amongst them. And the Bible even says that you hate what the Lord hates and stuff like that. And then there's the lukewarm church, you know, they don't know whether they are in or they are out. There's a woman, a church that is also like rebellious and really they're doing whatever it is that pleases them right so i think that um being bible-based christians is very very important especially in this day and age i've noticed that there's a gap in christianity because a lot of christians are not reading their bible Mm -hmm. a lot of issues that the christian church is currently experiencing right now is largely due to the fact that a lot of christians are expecting an open heaven from a closed Bible. Mm -hmm. We expect someone to stand on the pulpit and tell us that Jesus said this. We expect a prophet to come and say, listen, this is what the Lord said to to, to me. Mm -hmm. And we don't have time. We are busy. We are busy with worry, busy with our schedules, with our families, with our goals, everything else except for the word of the Lord. Anything that is not based on the word of the Lord, guys, no matter even if you call it Christian, you take a nice building, you paint it, you put a cross on it, a lot of horrors can go on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even colonialists Mm -hmm. uh, used Christianity to um, conquer Africa, Mm -hmm. right? They were not Christians, those people. They just came in the name of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So slapping a cross on something and decorating it, doesn't make it Christian. I think we need to start from there, Mm -hmm. right? So I I fear, unfortunately, that um, a lot of what the Bible is talking about is coming to pass about wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches are being misled. And the number one reason why this misleading is going to continue is just basically because people have closed Bibles. Any matter within the church, right? I understand that this was a personal matter, maybe marital affairs, but any matter within the church that we are supposed to address, we are supposed to address from a biblical point of view. Your perspective and your opinion come second only after what the Bible is saying. Come on now. Okay, so that's my, that is my two cents now as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, let me comment as a professional who has dealt with um, abuse uh, victims, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, What I noticed is that um, abuse victims are groomed. And and grooming is normally spoken about in the sense that... um, you know, adults groom children, but people are actually not aware that adults can actually groom adults, right? Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard of people talking about your inner child that was not healed, you understand? So a lot of these um, abusers in general, it doesn't matter whether your husband is a pastor or your boyfriend is a pastor or anything, but a lot of abusers they behave as if they went to a school to learn about psychological tendencies and they become master manipulators of those areas of your life where you are tender. So if your inner child, for example, there's certain areas, there's certain gaps that are missing from your childhood, that person is going to latch onto that wound Mm -hmm. from your childhood and they will keep working on that wound and working on that wound. And how it now works is that you have the Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. You now feel like your source is that person who is abusing you. Their opinion now matters more than your opinion. It matters more than your sister's opinion. It matters more than your your, your mother's opinion. I'm pretty sure that any one of us here that have been um, friends with or you've had a relative maybe who was in an abusive relationship, you can't tell them anything about moving, about acting towards that abuse. You, You can console them and they'll come to you are crying and and making as if they want you to give them a solution mm-hmm. but when in actual fact most abuse victims just want someone to listen to them so that they let out their pain dump it on you and then go back again 
to that source of pain. Mm-hmm. The only person that can move an abuse victim from abuse is the abuse victim themselves. So it becomes a very complicated matter very fast. Mm-hmm. And you'll find that even that person who was actually experiencing that abuse, um, maybe people try to intervene and then that person is actually going to end up fighting or not talking to the people that tried to help. So matters like this, unfortunately, they are complicated because you can then say now, okay, maybe what we were supposed to do as the church, instead of letting this this pastor stay on the pulpit and, and teach people and preach to people and live his pretend life while he was abusing the wife at home, um, maybe we were supposed to do something as a church. Do you know that it's possible that the wife herself could have actually fought the whole, the entire congregation on behalf of the husband. Because mm-hmm. what's what's going to happen is that the abuser is going to go back and, and then he's going to say, you see what you've done. Mm-hmm. And he's going to make it seem as if she is the one who has taken that pulpit away from him. Mm-hmm. So I feel like from a professional perspective, it, it becomes very complicated to untangle an abusive situation oh. it's never really um a, a, a straightforward situation mm-hmm. it's never really especially for adults for children it's it's very easy to actually make decisions on behalf of children mm-hmm. because of their innocence because of their ignorance because they do not understand it because decisions can be made to protect them mm-hmm. right yeah. but when it's an adult now it's very difficult because the same people that will be trying to protect Umam Fundisi are the same people in Guineni that may end up becoming enemies mm-hmm. of Umam Fundisi. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I think that... <sighs> so now, uh, now, since I'm speaking from the perspective of a professional, it's mm-hmm. very... When I'm doing clinical work, ne. It's very difficult for me, especially if I'm dealing with an adult to offer solutions, mm. uh, because I know that the person that has the solutions is the person who is in the situation. Mm-hmm. We'll never finish therapy if me now you come to me and I give you a solution that works for me from my perspective. Yeah. The only way that um, we are done with therapy sessions with a client normally is with the client themselves has now done so much introspection Mm -hmm. and so much healing Mm -hmm. that their mind is now clear. We've decluttered everything. We've unpegged everything. And this person is saying, okay, for me to heal, for me to move on, for this situation to, for for this to be the end of this abusive situation, this is what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah, But... From an institutional perspective, Mm -hmm. I would say that um, regardless of what's going on in a relationship between two people, Mm -hmm. from an institutional perspective, I think that we can set rules in churches that protect the entire congregation from being under leaders like that. There Send must the be police, certain babe. things that are non-negotiable. Why, why, why are the police not at the doorstep of the church? Why are they not there to fetch the, ch- the pastor at the pulpit? Why are the police not there? Why must we have these localized rules which are oppressing people even more? If something is illegal outside the church, it should be illegal inside the church. If you are abusive in the church, go to prison where your maids are. You will preach there because but I think there's a church. Now, do you see now that with Ill- Ill- things like uh, GPV, mm-hmm. like I said, the, the the church now can actually intervene in that regard, call the police, right, and 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 try to get the pastor arrested. Mm-hmm. The victim themselves are the same person who is going to go and try and fight for the husband, and you guys so, become the enemies. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's why I was saying that um, it may seem like a very straightforward issue for you to mm-hmm. say, okay, if there's abuse in the church. Don't let the abuser stand on the pulpit, call the police, lock that person away. Let's have a new pastor and that is dealt with. Mm. In reality, (laughs) it becomes 
a mess. It becomes something else that is completely different because the person who is being abused has been groomed into believing sure. certain things about themselves sure. and about their marriage and about the pastor. Yeah. Sometimes that pastor makes the wife believe that they deserved the treatment that they're giving be them, yeah. Abused. Mm. If you were not like this, I was not going to be like this. Absolutely. Okay, so I said that I'm going to offer, I think I've offered two perspectives so far from a professional standpoint, from a Christian it's standpoint, important. and then now I'm going to offer the, the standpoint from being quarter to um Umam Fundisi, and then I also experienced um like I said, a bit of behind the scenes and um, a bit of abuse. Mm -hmm. But Mina, as a person, naturally, where there is any form of abuse, my natural instinct is to run. Mm -hmm. And we're not all built the same, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So um, for my particular situation as well, even though my natural instinct was to run, um, and the relationship ended when the abuse was only just at the beginning phases. So what I mean by abuse is um, it wasn't violent at all, but it was um, the emotional type of abuse, right? When people, when someone plays mind games with you and then... Um, only later did I realize that, okay, no, man, the, pe the way this person used to word... And, and 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 mesh up their sentences was actually well thought through. And if I had stayed in this thing for a very long time, I was actually being groomed here. Mm -hmm. And I was actually agreeing to the things that this person was saying. I mean, I was already gone mm -hmm. and I was already willing to, to live under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But then um, one of the incidents I think that happened was when he... I don't know whether to say this because you know like if you've ever been in a church relationship there's obviously someone who knows you who would know who we are talking about and I didn't want to put oh, okay. um, you know Name yeah I didn't want to yeah. put the business out there yeah. <laughs> in case it becomes popular and then you know somewhere somewhere along the line someone puts two and two together and then his past comes up and I'm going to be involved in that so let me not state specifics of what happened behind mm. the scenes but I think the only way that I was able to get out was like I said the bible when the life that you are living and the word that you are reading is not matching up no matter how much someone is trying to groom you somewhere along the lines something that is going to say no man mm. Even if I wanted to fight, even if I wanted to stay, even if I wanted to believe everything that I was being told, there was something that said, this is not meant for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I, I think I think on, on the personal level, Nick, guys, I think I just... I think on the yeah, personal I level to be safe. Really yeah, not I think easy. on the on a personal level to, to be safe, just leave it it's there because easy. hey, you you might get into trouble. Um, yeah. thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate your input. I feel like this is like a beautiful way for us to open this live. So much informative, and I agree. Like I've I've never agreed with anybody the way that I'm agreeing with everything that you are saying right now. And I really appreciate the information that you're dropping because this is like something that we literally pay for for us to get. And yeah, thank you so much. I haven't time in time. I actually requested for you to join because I saw you were commenting a lot as somebody that has been, you know, from the pot. You know, you are from the pot. So I was hoping that if you don't mind, maybe you can share one or two things with us. But also, I would like to say that I actually did invite the two sisters of Makoto, the, the, the lady in question, um, um, Zo and Kokezo. I don't know if they're still around because I think I saw them here on t on TikTok. If they are around, ladies, I would love for you to join me um, immediately after I'm done with Intabi. Queen, uh, the, uh, open floor, Tima. If the ladies are around, um, I'm going to bring you back after they're done speaking because I feel like we need to... Okay, I see Zoleka is still around. I would love for you to speak. And when, when you join Zoleka together with your sister, if she's still here, if she's not here, it's fine. Even you alone is enough. Um, but I would love for Ntabi to speak first because I actually invited her to come in and then you guys can, I'll, I'll, I'll add you guys. Thank you so much. I can see you ladies are here. Hi, 
Hi, um, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm too comfortable to talk about like the entire story, sure. but I can just share my knowledge from my own experience without actually disclosing what actually happened. Sure. Um, from my own perspective, this thing starts uh, um, usually, let me just put it like this. Usually it starts off as if you are dating a pastor, mm -hmm. there is a belief that a pastor is not supposed to be in a relationship for a very long time without marriage, you know. Okay. So most of pastors decide to get married early. And for a lady, you find that you don't even know this person too well mm. you don't even know if you'll be able to live with this person how do they behave and all those things mm. and some of them because they are pressurized by the church you find that they are not even ready for a marriage you know mm. but because the church expects them to get married then they have to do it mm. so on my side um without sharing so much um the man was a pastor okay. and he's from a pastoral family they have a church and what happened is that we started off by dating, but it seemed as if it was a problem for us to date because apparently he has been in a relationship before and then he had a child. That was before he became a pastor. Mm -hmm. And now the concerns were that um, he can't be in a relationship now and not get married because what if something happened? It means that the, another child is going to come sure. out of the relationship. So many mistakes will be done and whatever we're going to be doing is a scene and all those kind of things. I should highlight that uh, I was still very young, you know, mm -hmm. and to be very honest, I don't want to lie. I regret getting married at that point in time because I felt like I didn't know this guy, you know, mm. but I did like him and I did love him. So what the problem was that when you find yourself in a, in, in a situation or in a relationship where you really, really love someone and now they ask for your hand in marriage and you say, but then I feel like we don't know each other that much. Can we just like date for, I don't know, maybe for a year or two, let's get to know each other. And this person will just like manipulate you and say, but then there are people who date and then they just get married after six months. Shouldn't you be happy that I'm proposing marriage? I don't want to play with you mm. and all these kind of things. And even that you become so naive and you agree, you're like, ah, oh, no, it's fine. We can go ahead. And another thing is that you just don't want to make this person feel like you don't love them, you know? Yeah. So, okay, fine. Um, I got married. When I got married, um, it's in the church. Of course, I felt safe because I had not experienced anything bad from church before. And my mindset was that uh, church is the safe space. You know, it's it's where one is supposed to be. If you are married to a man who 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 knows God, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. You know. And another thing is that we we were always told that you must not be um, unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Sure. So when you find the one that believes. You are happy, Balance. but you don't really know this person and who this person is and what is their character, mm -hmm. right? So now, um, for me, I did get married. When I got married, everything was fine. Uh, um, but I had issues with the fact that this person uh, felt a little bit, I don't know how to, to put it, but this person uh was threatened by my success let me put it like that um i am a lawyer i don't want to mention what his profession was and at that time and point whenever we are together if we fall into a conflict or an argument it always or a disagreement it always had to be that hey you i can't when you are a lawyer you know so much you know this you know that you know mm. and then one time I picked up something that I actually didn't like, which I felt was a red flag, that, um, you know, the way, like the way, um, if ever you were not a lawyer, I would have beaten you up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because in my previous relationships, I've beaten so and so and so up. And 
this person is telling these things to me, you know? Mm. So my response to him was that, you try me. I don't care that we are married, we are husband and wife or whatnot. If you beat me up, I'll get your ass arrested and I'm not even going to feel bad about it, mm. you know? So I also had to, like, stand up for myself. So I feel like a lot of people who are abusive, they also look at you first. They study you and how you react to the nonsense that they do to you. When they see that you have a weakness to succumb to everything mm. that they do and you can't stand up for yourself. That's when now they, 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 they start to attack you. Mm. And once he beats you for the first time and you stay, he's going to beat you for the rest of your life. He's yeah. going to beat you until you die. Yeah. So for me, I, I think when I told him that it, it really hurt him to a point where now he also had to set a meeting with... Um, his parents, because whenever we had issues, he would always tell his parents that this is what uh, this woman is doing and all these kind of things. And then now um, he tells his parents that uh, I always talk about the fact that Mina, I'm a lawyer. If he beats me up, I'm going to get him arrested and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So now it means that uh, there's going to be a conflict between me and his parents. They're not going to like me if he, he tells them stuff about me, right? Mm -hmm. So now when I we were in a relationship, things started off as if maybe I don't want to submit. But I felt like people don't understand the concept of submission. Sure. You show me love, then I will submit. A woman is meant to, 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 to love a, a, a man. Of course, you can't say that as a woman, I have to respect you but you don't want to respect me as well. Love comes with respect. Sure. We respect each other. Sure. I love you. I respect you. And you love me. You respect me. That's how it's supposed to be. It's not yeah. supposed to be one-sided. So with this issue, is that simply because I, I, I spoke bad back that day when he said I would have beaten you up, it means that I don't want to submit. Yeah. So now I started, have to, I, I, I started to have to experience a lot of, of cheating. Um, a lot Is this of a man disrespect. of God? And I wasn't supposed to say anything, you know? Okay. So now when I had issues in the marriage and now I go and tell the parents, this is what I'm going through, this person is cheating on me and all this kind of things. Uh, the answers would always be that, what did you do to him mm -hmm. that caused him to cheat on you? Yes. It means you are not submitting. You are not... Uh, 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 how do you call this? You are not treating him as a husband mm. because you do this, you do this, you do that. Mm. So eventually when this person starts to uh, uh, emotionally manipulate you, because for me, I've not experienced physical abuse. I could have, if I mm. have allowed, I, I had allowed him on the first day to do whatever he wanted to do. But I have never experienced it from that day going forward. But what I experienced was emotional abuse, mm. you know, where I'm not supposed to voice out things because I'm going to be seen as a person who is um, educated and who feels like I, 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 I what do you call this? Um, um, I'm better than him and all these things. I had to be uh, uh, labeled as a person who belittles him. You could not basically even have a... a a conversation with him uh, uh, as a husband. You can't disagree to agree because when you are educated, you are a lawyer, mm -hmm. you do this and that. So for me, I had to now drop my standards, you see? Drop my standards until now it became emotional abuse because I need to prove myself that I am submissive. Mm -hmm. So many things happened in the marriage, but what I have realized is that the church <laughs> did not care their parents stood with their kids. So I'm saying this because I, I've been following this story um, of the lady who passed away mm -hmm. and my condolences to the family. I think it triggered me as well because for me, I could not have died from uh, um, being beaten, but I could have died from emotional abuse. Yeah. I was depressed when I left the marriage. I was mm -hmm. literally depressed. I had zero confidence. Mm -hmm. And worst part is that I was not only dealing with the husband only, but I was also dealing with the parents who are pastors, sure. you know. Sure. And at the end of the day, I, I felt like I am the worst sinner for having decided to leave the marriage because I was not doing well health-wise. Yeah. I remember... Um, this, this form of abuse was not only, uh, with regards to, to, uh, what do you call this talking only some things were just actions, you know, mm -hmm. where someone would disappear for like 
seven, eight days, the next thing you see pictures on social media of them with another person mm. somewhere, you know, and you don't have anyone to talk to because even the parents who are pastors, uh, they, 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 they are tired of you. They don't care about yeah, you. Yeah, but must they and kill their th child now for you? Must they kill their child hmm? because of you? They're not going to kill their child because of you. So they're tired of listening to you complaining about their favorite child. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see? So it means you need to choose yourself under yeah. such circumstances. Absolutely. And you're not wrong for choosing yourself. Absolutely. So for me, basically, it has been that I just don't want to get into the details of because there are a lot of things that happen. Yeah. But I went as far as being accused of because I lost a child mm -hmm. in, during this uh, time of an emotional abusive marriage. Uh, where I was being told to stay, there were a lot of um, meetings between families. There was a lot of bad mouthing from his parents to my family. Mm -hmm. Of course, my family knows me, so they're not going to believe that. Yeah. That was not an issue. But there was a lot that happened for me to stay. I was begged to stay and not leave because divorce is a sin. You know, mm -hmm. once you divorce with your husband, you can't marry someone. You can't marry someone or be with someone else because it's adultery and all this kind of thing. So those things were put in my mind, and I was struggling to make a decision because I am a Christian sure. and I love God and I don't want to embarrass or I don't want to disappoint God, you know? Mm. So I, I just ended up going into a mental breakdown because of all these things that were being fed to me. And in the, in the process, because I was pregnant when all these things was, were happening, that was in 2020, um, I lost a child in September uh, during birth because of fetal distress. Mm. And after I remember that was like I stayed on the at the hospital for three days, mm. and then when I was discharged, um, the mother the, the the mother of the father came and took me, and then everything was fine. We went to the family. They buried the child. We were okay. So one time, I remember it was after three days um, of the burial of the child. Mm. I asked her. This is a pastor, guys. Uh, I ask her, um, how do you feel that you lost your grandchild? Your, your, yes, your grandchild. She said, no, I was looking forward to having a granddaughter, um, but there's something that I actually um, um, dreamt of uh, about you that doesn't sit well with me. Okay, mm -hmm. what is it? Um, I dreamt of you uh, wearing a white gown, giving over the child to people who were wearing black clothes. It was an old man and an old woman. So that for me, when I interpreted it as, is a form of, of, of sacrifice. Hey. Imagine I just lost my child and I'm being told that I have sacrificed the child. You are being accused <laughs> by your mother-in-law. Mental abuse. Huh? For me, that felt like it was mental abuse. Now I look at it and I just feel like... <laughs> I, I, I was being abused all along and I could not even see it. You know? So, no, no, no. Do you now understand that this abuse runs in the family? And, and when, who are you to come into that family and try to be like, listen, I'm going to make a change in this. These people deserve to just stay alone there without any interference because what the hell is that? You, you, they're accusing you of, of taking your own child and sacrificing them. And she, her timing is perfect for her to be telling you as the mother of this child, something like that, as an entire pastor. Yeah, so I was told that's what she dreamt of. And I'm like, but then I don't know such things. I'm not a witch. I don't know any form of witchcraft. I don't even, at that point in time, I was not even a candidate at 10 years. I did not even own anything. I don't have anything. So why are you saying I have sacrificed the child? Why did I gain out of it? The child that I have carried for nine months, you know? She mm -hmm. was like, no, it happens. More especially if you, you were born in a family wow. where they practice witchcraft because really? it's like they initiate you um um automatically i don't know from birth mm. or something like that mm. and honestly speaking at that time point in time things are not going well between me and the husband i don't have anyone to talk to they were actually trying and to just shift the blame and focus on you just blaming yourself and making sure that they distance themselves and their son from whatever it is that you you, you were going through yeah yeah so after i told him because when he came back at that point in time because things are not going well with someone who comes back maybe after 2 a.m in the morning mm -hmm. 
um, I tell him this is what happened and this is what your mother said to me and I don't appreciate it. You know, I, 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 I am hurt. I'm going through a lot. And the last thing I want is for someone to tell me that I killed my own child. Mm -hmm. And at that time, remember, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm suffering from uh, postnatal depression, depression, the loss yeah. of a child as well. So whatever you tell me will stick mm. to my mind and I'm mm -hmm. going to believe whatever you're going to tell me about myself because I was not... In a, in a good mental state, you know. Mm. So now I start blaming myself. And when I told him about him uh, about it, and he asked the mother, she said I am hallucinating. Wow. So probably because I lost the child. You know, she wow. never said those things. Wow. So I just thought like maybe I should have recorded her or something. And at that time, I never thought she was gonna say something like that. So I didn't record her. And now I just start to look like I'm I'm a crazy person. Wow. One, two, three, um, she calls my family and tells them that I mean, uh, apparently I need to go to a psychiatric hospital because I am crazy, mm -hmm. I fight with the husband, I don't do this, I don't do that, a whole lot of things, you know. And I, I really, really appreciate my family for standing by me. I really mm -hmm. appreciate my father because my mom passed away when I was like 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate my father for not forcing me to stay, you know, because mm -hmm. my mother told me that if it's not working out, come back home, yeah. you know. And my aunts as well stood by me and said, you know what, we... we you are not homeless. You have a home. You are educated. You you are still young. You can mm. leave that person and come back home. And that's what I did. Yeah. And by the time I left that place, because I'm just trying to summarize, there are a lot of things that happened, yeah. a lot of things that happened. Yeah. But by the time when I left that place, mentally, I was... I was exhausted. Mm. I was sick. I couldn't sit for a very long time. I did. I couldn't stand the light. So I always wanted to be in the dark. Like I wanted to sleep in the dark because... I don't know what was happening, but I also had that those were signs of depression and all these mm. things. So I went home. When I went home, I was then, um, I remember it happened in 2020. I left early 2021 when I went home, but I couldn't bring myself to start or initiate divorce. Mm. So I do understand women who actually uh, decide to stay even when they are being abused. It's mm. not easy for you to to leave, mm. you know, but especially if you are dealing with a narcissist because sure. before you, you are abused, there was a lot of love bombing that happened at the, at the, at the first stages of the relationship mm. where you felt like, oh, wow, this person is a great person mm. and probably something, and if you are a Christian, you gonna, you're going to think that maybe it's, a, it's the devil, you know, they're going to change. They're going to change. So even when you leave, you basically go back mm -hmm. again. For me, of course, I didn't go back. I, I did not go back. Mm -hmm. I, I made sure I didn't, but I did miss him. There were times where I wanted to go back as well. So I am not going to sit here and say I do um, ask why didn't who and who passed away leave. Mm -hmm. No. I have my own way of dealing with, dealing with yeah. things. Other people have their own way of mm -hmm. dealing with things. For some people, you know? it takes even longer. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So mm. with me also, the period of 2021, I couldn't do anything up until May, uh, sorry, February 2022. That's when I had the strength to actually initiate the divorce, which of course didn't take time for me. Mm. I did not want anything for him, from him. I just wanted peace of mind. You so. know, I just wanted my, my, my peace of mind. And I initiated the divorce and then it was finalized on the 19th of May and I was finally free. Mm. Um, so I... I mean, I mean, abuse come in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, this might not really relate to what um, happened to the lady that we are talking about today, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to show how sometimes churches can be very ruthless than we think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another thing is that if you find yourself in, in, in such a position, you need to choose yourself. Sure. You know, you need to choose yourself. Sure. It's not bad. It's, it's I know it's a sin to divorce, but if ever there's a situ situation cause you to divorce, then you have to do it mm. for your own self so that you can leave. And more especially if you have kids. I don't yes. have kids myself, but if you have kids, you have to think about your kids mm. as well. To say mm. that if this man kills me or something happens to me, then who's going to take care of my kids? For mm. me, it was my little sister because I have a little sister mm. who looks up to me and my mom passed away, like I said. So mm. I thought if ever I stay here and I die or I get committed in a psychiatric hospital or commit suicide or something happens to me, then what's going to happen to my little sister? Mm. You know, because I'm going to cause trauma to that, that child. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. And, yeah. Whew. 
Thank you so much, Ntabi. I really appreciate you just honoring the invite. And uh, I, I just want to say to you that this is very much relatable, what you are sharing with us, because you can't say that it's off, it's not off topic. It's still within the same scope of what we're talking about today, because um, the reason why I actually invited the sisters is because of how they were sharing the story on social media, because the fact that their sister is late and uh, her blood, like literally she is crying from the grave and the little that we can do, which is just liberating more women so that nobody ever has to die the same way that she died, is the least that we can do to honor her. You get what I mean? So the story that you are sharing is a story that has a happy ending, which other people can actually look up to, to say, had she not passed away, she was probably going to be just like the way that you are. So your story is really, really worth sharing and I really appreciate you coming through for, for uh, to share with us. I'm going to have to let you go, Ty, because I just want to remain with the two sisters that are invited so that we can um we can we can just uh, wrap it up hi zolega and and the defense thank you so much ladies for honoring my invite and, and coming through hi hi madam speaker thank you so 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 much for allowing us to be in your platform and everyone who's listening helping us supporting us helping us to make a noise mm. so that it doesn't come across or mustn't be in vain because mm. there are still many makotos there who are going through exactly what Uma Koto is going through. And I would also like to thank uh, the former speaker and the latter speaker, especially the social worker. I think mm -hmm. she nailed it when she explained why Uma Koto wouldn't okay. let go. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for some reason it gives me peace because of now I understand, because to be honest with you, I was a bit angry to mm -hmm. say, but you had wow. all the support that you needed. Why couldn't you walk away? What made you, what kept you in that marriage? And we ended up only having you for only five months, five months only. Mm -hmm. And you know, when she came back this time, I remember saying to my mother, I, I think she means it this time. And my mother was saying, I, because mm -hmm. you know, she would come back home, go back just like that. Mm -hmm. So this time she would, tell things that, you know, things that she would hide before and s tell us that she it, it's enough. She cannot take it, especially from the mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She would tell us how much the mother-in-law would protect the son, which was the husband, a, a, a husband, how the mother-in-law would tell the son in front of her that, Hi, Bobo, you don't have to beg a woman to stay. Mm -hmm. And there were moments when she would call asking for help from the mother-in-law. And the mother-in-law attested to that when we had a family meeting, by the way, to say that, I I you know mm -hmm. there are audios that I will also share of the mother in law telling us that as I'll share those um, with you as well. Yeah, I'll DM you a we, life. We are really hit. I don't want to lie. We tried all that we could. As a big sister, I did all that I, I, I could. When she came back, I would take her out, you know, just try to make her at least forget some of the things. Little did I know the damage that she had inside of her. Mm. She was really damaged because she couldn't live without a nebulizer. People who are asthmatic would know what a nebulizer yes, is. She Every time when she sleeps, we had to support her with pillows, five to six pillows. Mm. She would sleep like with a support as if she's sitting. Because whenever she sleeps flat, you, you could hear that she's struggling to breathe. She was mm. struggling to breathe. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was asthmatic from when she was young, but it was not the severe. Mm -hmm. Had we known that this asthma was being triggered by something and things that happened to her, I think maybe we could have tried more. I think we could have tried more. Yeah. We are really hurt. I don't want to lie. We are really, really hurt. Sissy, so the one thing that I want to ask you now, because I Mina, mean, I've not slept since yesterday, because there's one lady, I think, I believe it's your friend or a colleague or something, who has been tagging me on your things a lot. Then I didn't sleep because I was trying to figure out what is happening here, compile everything and just do a video that I did this morning, right? Um, I want to find out from you, Hori, since that video that I did and all the other videos that have been made after that, 
how how have you guys been feeling because i think i saw uh Gifenze's comment in one of the videos where people were saying the family is also to blame i know that the frustration and the pressure is a lot because once you come out with uh, information like this to say we are calling people out we want justice for our sister there's gonna be a lot of tongue lash which is gonna come with that how have you guys been coping since we've been publicizing this thing up until so far it's heavy. I don't want to lie. It's heavy. Mm. If you can go also on my Facebook page, you would see that the Koza family from their uh, husband's side, they've made fake accounts mm. and they were anti-us, fighting us mm -hmm. for coming out. And by the way, it started at the funeral. We didn't only start it on social media. Mm -hmm. We made sure that at the funeral, people knew the truth. We tried to be as loud as we can, even from the from the funeral. And thank you so much for your videos because of people are aware as to what is going on, what are we going through. Your videos are helping us a lot mm -hmm. because it, it brings that attention to say, no man, there's a cry, there's a cry for help from a certain family. And mm -hmm. we truly, truly appreciate, Madam Speaker. We really appreciate, I don't want to lie. We mm. really appreciate. No, it's okay, my sister. You know what? I, I've been saying this and I'll still say the same thing to say, listen, if it means that one more video, every single video has to be done for, for, for Makoto to get her justice, we will do exactly that. We'll give you all the support that you need. And how uh, how is your mom coping now? Because I think on the video that I posted in the morning, I, I saw Kifensa saying that the father to, to, to Bongani said to, was it to you, to, to, to Kifensa and your mom, that um, Makoto is dead. She can't come back and defend herself from the grave, you know. How, how is mom taking the whole thing? Because she's like my biggest worry right now. How is she able to handle the whole thing? Because now, like I said, the attention that is coming with it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to yield good results, but it's hard. You know, it was, it, it's hard on her, especially this morning. She said, and uh, uh, Makoto's phone has an alarm. Mm. I I held my tears and then looked away so that she mustn't see that I'm crying. Mm. And when Makoto's alarm went on, I mm. think that was the time that Makoto would wake up and prepare her kids to go to school. Mm. When it went on and the kids are, were, are not there because they took the kids uh, from us, by the way, mm. forcefully so. My mom stood here, she woke up and she said, oh, Makoto would be saying, Popo Vuka, Mimi Vuka. You know, she she imitated what Makoto would do and she sat on her bed and she cried. Mm. And it, it hit me so, so hard. And yes, when it was raining, she said, I wonder if Abantana Bumtana am a warm now. I wonder about right. I wonder about Lele. You know, all of that. Mm. My mom is not okay. I don't want to lie. She's not mm. coping. She is not coping in this situation. Mm. She is trying to be strong because she knows that she has to be strong for, for Abantana Baka Makoto mm. and I. But what hits her most is that Abantana Baka Makoto are not safe wherever they are. Because mm. if the father was abusive in front of them towards their mother, mm. what more when she's alone with them, mm. when he's alone with the kids? Yeah. I'm seeing Ripomelo Jessica here saying Koza was a pastor at our church at Bungeni. He was chased out because of his behavior. And I do believe that exactly what she's saying right now is what you had said in one of your statements to say she he was chased wow. out from Bungeni, from Zanin, and then now they moved him to East Rand. Uh, how do you, like, for me, ne, I feel like if somebody is going to be moved around like this and the problem is not being solved, you are literally just fueling him and saying that he, he should do more of whatever it is that he's doing. Because like you said in your statement, you will correct me because I'm going to be paraphrasing a lot, Nessie, that um, instead of the church actually dealing with the whole thing, they decided to move him around and just make him run away from one place to another place. Um, do you, like, when, when he moves with your sister, I guess when, whenever he moves, he moves with your sister, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. What, how was that, was it making things better? Was the movement, the suspension, was it making things any better or things were just worse or were they the same throughout all these movements and everything that was happening, his misbehavior and the way he's been, like, in general, how, how, how were things being, being every time when they move him around? Obviously, uh, can I comment on that one? Yes, okay, hello. add on that one, Kifense. Yeah, um, him being moved around, it never changed anything, ne? Mm -hmm. Uh, with his last move, uh, to Pinoni, mm -hmm. ne, the Davidson side, mm -hmm. uh, what happened was he moved, Mato was already home at that time, they were, he was moved to Pinoni, and then they said Bongani can't go to church alone without a wife. Now, he had to be convinced and to come and convince my sister to go and, and pre look presentative 
in front of the congregation that he came to a new congregation with a wife. You understand? Mm -hmm. That was the only reason and the only uh, concern to uh, the church and his parents that uh, Mato should be a poker face and she should be the, and I, I don't know what to call her, like a shadow mm -hmm. on his side. You understand? Mm -hmm. So she was always a shadow. Uh, for, 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 for their reputation, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really sad. And um, when she went back the last time, she didn't even inform me. That's the sad part. Because mm -hmm. when I called her, no, I'm, uh, no, do you expect me to report everything to you? Mm -hmm. I said, no. I understand that we had an agreement, me and you, that how we're going to tackle this one. But then uh, at the end, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, a few weeks ago, she said, you know what, my sister... I'm sorry about last time because we did talk about this and the last time I went back, he pressed the buttons that she always pressed and mm -hmm. I wasn't aware up until now that mm -hmm. I was going back and to destroy myself. Mm -hmm. And then when they went back, when he when she went back, uh, he promised her that he would go for counselling. But Mani never for one day went for counselling. Mm -hmm. He never, ever, ever went for counselling. And she went alone for counselling. Uh, when she arrived there, the one is not there. Mm -hmm. But what's the point of going there while we are, when we are alone? Mm -hmm. So she couldn't continue anything because the counseling wasn't for her. Yes. It was for Bongani. She was a support structure, by the way. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, it con the, the abuse continued. It, it really continued and it became, uh, it became really severe. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. So to a point that... Um, my, my sister, we, we did communicate a lot. I don't want to lie. Mm -hmm. And... I was even making plans for her to just come to my side and run away from everything. From Kambungeni, Zanini. I remember when she was in Zanini, it was even worse. Mm -hmm. I was still in the Northwest before I came to Mpumalanga. And I, I, I set up a room and said, you know what? I, I'll make sure that the kids, the school is set up. I went to the school, setting up everything that when they come, then everything is prepared. Mm -hmm. I prepared all of that. Ne? Mm -hmm. And then I sent man to say, this is for the toll gates. Still, like how when he's gone. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, little did she know that <coughs> this guy is coming back just now. Mm -hmm. When she was on her way out, then hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. Hell broke loose, and that's where things became very, very bad. That's the time when they were moved from Zanini mm -hmm. to Pinon. Mm -hmm. When he beat her up and he he he, he beat her up in, in public. So he beat her up in public and his family went to rescue him. His family went to rescue him and from, from the mob justice, by the way. Mm. And they took they took him away from the mob justice and they left my sister there with the kids. If they say they care so much about those kids, my, my sister, when I fetched her the last time now at Pinoni, mm. why did they leave them to rent a room that was so small, small like a toilet? Mm. On the floor, it was not even tiles. Mm. If they loved those kids so much and loved their mamuruti, their mache fro so much, why didn't they protect her, uh, protect her and the kids? Mm. So this is so painful to a point that, you know what, uh, justice must be served, sister, and uh, you're helping us a lot with these lives, and mm -hmm. we, we need the word to spread, and gender-based violence, it needs to stop, and yeah. it needs to stop now, and yeah. you know what, ne, um, ish, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really emotional, and you know what, they are stealing our time for mourning, mm. honestly, because mm. we are not mourning, instead, it's, We're it's fighting. really painful, and it, yes, we can't mourn, and um accepting my sister's uh passing uh, i haven't i i because i, I, I just, i'm like no i'm confused i just spoke to my daughter just now mm. she was very healthy mm. so what did they say like what what did they say the cause of her death is 
It was going to be like that it's asthma because mm. of we didn't make an e- e- autopsy. Oh, yeah. Mm. But because we were staying with her, we understood, we knew what she was going through. Yeah. And I think one other thing that triggered her asthma, it was when she would communicate with the ex-husband. Mm-hmm. And you would see that it hits her. Mm. It hits her every time she would communicate with with him regarding regard the kids. That's when my mom said, hey, no, even if it takes a phone. But she would change. She would be moody for the whole day. Mm-hmm. Should she hear a voice from that man, she would change and be, not become herself for the whole day. Mm-hmm. For the whole day. And you know, one thing that it's so sad, Madam Speaker, above everything else, it is for the for Bongani's family to take Makoto's death as if it, it, it is just a dog that died. Mm. I mean, when you say to another woman that uh, your daughter is dead, she's no more, she's gone. Mm. As if it's it's just another animal that was slaughtered and, mm. and let's get on and, and uh, move on. And one thing that I've noticed about this family, mm. it is that they never loved my sister. However, they needed her to keep the status and for her to keep their son in career because in the religious churches, I believe I don't know much about that, mm. but I believe that you cannot be umfundis without a wife. Mm. So that's why they needed her with Abe Nobongani, mm. so that to the congregation, to the eyes of the people, they should think that no, our pastor, or our reverend, whatsoever he's called, has a wife and he's in a family structure. So that's only one thing that they needed to make for to support the status Skabongani. Mm. But then my sister, because these people. <laughs> Uh, already knew, you know, that this person was behaving the way that... They, I, I mean, I agree, this man has been beating her up even in public. So they knew yes. that his behavior was... He's a hooligan, this guy. Yes. So him being a hooligan that he is, is it is it that for as long as he has a wife, he's then acceptable in the church and is able to preach regardless of all this behavior that he has and all this abuse that he's been giving his wife? Because remember you said that the only reason why she went back to the church was because... Um, he couldn't go to the Binoni uh, branch without having a wife, right? But already people like the lady who just com- commented earlier on saying that he was troublesome even from the Bungeni branch. So everybody already knew that this person is, is he's, beha- he's a hooligan. He behaves like a hooligan. So then with all of that, was it then acceptable for him to still be a leader or still be able to preach in the church as long as he has a wife, even though he's treating his wife like a dog? That's what people uh, treated you know what happened, actions. Mm. Ma- Madam Speaker, yes, you know no. what happened, ne? Mm. Um, what he would always do and would always tell my sister after beating her up, he would say, I'm going to beat you so much, even if you go to church, they'll never believe because I'll be preaching about it at the end of the day wow. and they will be on my side. Yeah. That's what he would say every time. Yes, that's what he would say every time. So he would beat her up and then go and justify why he beat her up so that the people can see her being the wrong one. Yes. Recently, it was even worse because he preached about it to say women and children abuse. My sister just sat in there and cried. Yeah? After doing that, he preaches about it and the church will cheer him. Yeah, our pastor, our reverend. Are these church members okay? And they say they cl- some claim not to have known about the situation, but my sister is a person that at the end, I think at Bugenge, um, at Daviton, she started really speaking out about this and the situation where that's happened. And she didn't even have to speak out about it. The, the community knew mm. and the church members knew what was happening. Mm. They knew what was happening because I remember when I went to my sister after she, after she was beaten up, she was in the hospital and I went to the house to see if he's there. I got to the house and the community, you saw, the, as the car was, was going in the, the mansion house, everybody stood outside the street. They wanted to see the action. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand up until later to say, why were the people standing around the, the, the churchyard? Mm-hmm. They wanted to see maybe what was going to happen to him. Mm-hmm. Or oh, they thought maybe you were there because of uh, a, f- a fight or something. It probably because we didn't understand what was happening because when I got to the house, I sat there and I asked to say, what really happened? Mm. He says, no, asthma attack. I said, no, 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 Bongani. Mm. I know asthma attack. Mm. I know asthma attack. My mom has had asthma for 
for the longest time and it had never uh, 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 put my mom's eyes re- uh, blood red mm-hmm. and, I, and and blood coming out of the, the ears, the eyes and, and the mouth and the nose. No. Mm-hmm. I would hear my mom breathing from that, from another room but it, ne- it had never caused whatever that I saw at the hospital. Mm. And he was, he wasn't even saying like, he, he he was talking this, talking that, talking. And then my partner said, no, no, like, so we need to leave. Mm. This guy is not truthful. Mm. He's not truthful. He knows exactly what happened. And immediately I called out. I said, no, mama, you need to come to Pinoni mm. and see what has happened. Uh, the situation is out of hand. Mm. I came to see for myself and I need, I, I only send a report out home to say, my sister, it's happening again. Mm. I need help. I can't do this alone. I always reported to say, mama, it has started again. Mama, it has started again. Mm. And she trusted me so much to tell me so that I can tell my mom. Mm. The reason why she couldn't tell my mom is like, my mom always told her, mm. but you never listened. Mm. You understand? She had that fear to say, mm. But then you never listened. So- yeah, no, I do understand. You know, it's a, I can remember what what the, the the culprit did to her was that she he made sure or he disarms he disarms her so much that everything whatever it is that happens to her she should be able to blame herself in everything. You understand? So that even going back mm-hmm. it will feel like you know what what Tuana it's it, I might as well just stay here and die here because if I go back I'm gonna be blamed if I stay here I'm gonna be, she, she was literally carrying blame the whole time. But then I wanna find out Cecil Hori from her moving from Agari. After her being beaten up by the husband, she was then in hospital. Yes. So then from the hospital, yeah. is it only then that she went home to, to, to stay with you guys for the five months before she passed away? Or did she go back? Or how, how did she move from her matrimonial home to your to your mother's house? Uh, what happened was after she was discharged from the hospital, my mom and aunt and my um yeah, my, my aunt, my mom went back to the mission house. Mm. They went back and to to ask her, okay, what has really occurred? Because you know she was a victim. She still lied to say no, it was asthma. But the the, the clothing that she had on on that day, it was bloody. Mm. Asthma doesn't give you bloody clothes, and it doesn't give you scratches on your neck. You know what? Mm. So and and the hair also at the hospital had had blood. So it's it's things that my mom noticed as well when she went there. Mm. But then when they fetched her at the medicine house, say no, she said no, everything is fine. We are fine. Like she pretended as if everything was fine because yeah. she was scared. Mm. She was really terrified. Mm. A few a few days later, I think prior to the to the incident, then he chased her out with the kids and. Chasing her out, she went to the that uh, that first time she went to the the, the uh, Davidson police station. They almost slept at Davidson police station. She called one of my cousins that's a nearby Ulula, mm-hmm. and then when he, she called Ulula, Lula saw the situation. He also called the elders to attend to whatever that was happening. You mm-hmm. understand? Yeah. So the police knew about this, wow. but you must remember she was scared to even open a case. She was. Almost, I don't know how many hours at the police station, sitting there, and the kids were sleeping right there at the police station. But but she couldn't open a case because she was scared of this man. She, she was really scared. I don't want to lie. My sister was terrified of this man. Mm. She even said, this person can bury me and even bury me underneath the house and then cry with you guys as if he did nothing. Mm. That's how cruel and brutal he is. Mm. That's, that's what she told me. Mm. so and then you ladies are you not scared for your lives because if your sister was so scared of this person and you guys are openly speaking about this of which mean i'm very much in support of what you guys are doing that's why i'm backing you up the whole way are you not scared the same way that your sister was scared i don't want to lie i am scared mm. i don't want to lie and i know that should people should know should anything happen to me the causes must know because by the way they are known for brutality mm. in the township that mm. we are living in in mushaking mm. we grew up in mushaking mm. they are not a family to be messed with uh, according to people mm. they are not a family that you do something and you get away with it mm. however for the cause of my sister and for the cause of trying to save other women mm. so be it if it should be yeah. because of 
me being scared and trying to hold back and not saying anything, it's, it will also cost another woman. You can just imagine in that church how many women are going through what Umakoto was saying. Earlier you asked a question, did it make it better or worse? I think it made him to get away with everything. And I don't think he's the only one, madam. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's the only one. For the mere fact that they would make a plan to change him around, that should tell you how many are like him and mm -hmm. are being changed around. Mm -hmm. That should tell you that those family members who don't have wiki fans and also like who would speak out loud, mm -hmm. who's speaking for them. Mm -hmm. Because if a church, you, you, you saw the report of Dr. Kunza Kosa, hey. yes, when she tried to object and showed them the other side to say, but what about the victim? Mm -hmm. So that should, that tells you that these are the things that are hidden mm -hmm. in the church or in, 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 in the body of Christ, a, 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 a Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. These are things that are happening right under the nose of, of the high ranking mm -hmm. of the moderators. They know about this. Some of them probably mm -hmm. are even abusive yes. to their wives. Yes. Hence, you cannot, madam, you cannot hide who you are not. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a thief, you'll never expose another thief. Mm -hmm. So that's why they, they cannot expose Bongani. Mm -hmm. They can't expose him because they are who Bongani is. Well, for those who know, others might not know because it's different parishes. Mm -hmm. But for those who know, they are hiding themselves through Bongani because if Bongani is exposed, it means they are also exposed. Mm -hmm. And then what about, because somebody is asking about the kids now to say, are you not worried about the safety of the kids? And do you have any plan regarding the kids? Or what are you going to do with them? Who's taking care of them right now as we speak? And what's going on with the kids? They forcefully took the kids after the funeral. We, mm. we, we are asking for any source of help, any kind of help to get the kids back. Mm. We don't have a plan. I don't want to lie. We don't have a plan. Mm. We, we, there was a social worker who was involved. Unfortunately, she went into um, a sick leave mm -hmm. because the case of these kids were in social workers at the school. Mm. So we, we, any kind of help for us to get the kids, it is welcome. We, we are asking and we are pleading to be helped to get the kids back because Ubangani grew up in an abusive home. Mm. The father to Ubangani was abusive to Umamaga Bongani. Mm. So what do you think Ubangani will be to Unzago? Yeah. Unzago is, who is Unzago? Is the, the, the child? Yes, the child. Yeah. So you see that it will be a vicious cycle. Yeah. And I would like to add on 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 something um, regarding the meetings they had. No, Doctor Uposh, your name. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was um, on the fourteenth of of September, they had a uh, had a sit in. Mm -hmm. They called her at Bramfontein at their um, at their offices, mm -hmm. and then they had a meeting with her. In that meeting, Mato said she told me after that meeting that she was uh, convinced to go back to that uh, husband uh, of hers. Uh, after everything, like she was convinced and then um, and then the, 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 the report that she was given by, um, it was given by, I don't know, it's one of the bishops that handled her case. And uh, it was said that the mother is the one that asked for Makoto to be convinced to go back to, to, to that marriage. You know, and it, it, it breaks me to say, oh, this family, they, 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 they blind. They, 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 they ganged up on her. They ganged up on her. They gang, yes, they ganged up on her. And, and she, when she came back from that meeting, my sister got even an attack, even the same day. Mm -hmm. She called me and said, I'm not well. Not know I'm already home. I'm waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So as soon as she got home, Umakoto was sick. We didn't sleep that evening. Mm -hmm. We didn't sleep that evening. She was, she was, she had an attack. She had, she was vomiting, uh, um, mucus. It was full of, it, full in the bucket. I'm like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. My sister was very sick from that date of the, of the 50, of uh, the, the 14th of, of September, which was how many months back? Two months back, I think. 
just after that meeting and then they even asked her to, does she want the sit in to be uh, him uh, he should be uh, present in the sit in he said she said no 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 i don't want to see that man next to me mm. then they said no it's fine we will separate the sittings hence um the the report from doctor mm. his sitting was after makoto's sitting to say no uh this is the report from the wife that she wants nothing to do with the church she wants nothing to do with you so she is done mm. with everything mm. so those, those were her last words to the to the uh, Bramfontein uh, headquarters to say no you know what i am done with this marriage it's fine he can do whatever he wants because he always threatened her with the divorce mm-hmm. and then she ended up saying no divorce me it's fine mm. divorce me it's okay i don't i don't i'll hold nothing against you you can go ahead and divorce me mm. i'll send you a clip where she was very frustrated and he sent her a very very long note saying that life is a book and you know he's a narcissist mm-hmm. he says life is a book o mamu ruti behave like one like you know the things that the, the salads he was throwing at her you know i have that and i will send you and forward the the recordings including the the messages that he was sending her it, it wasn't nice and threatening mm-hmm. her like mm-hmm. it wasn't nice mm-hmm. it wasn't nice makoto at the, the end days uh, and the words that were coming out from the the, the husband mm. they were they were really not nice and for people that are saying and protecting ubongani it's fine protect your own we also protect and fight for our own you understand mm. but then we have this concrete proof that ubongani was really abuse, abusive to umakhotso and last day. we are going to fight this with the proof that we have mm. if they say ngokuthi na umfazi weka wrong let them come with what they have as well yes yes my sister it's fine you're going to send me everything that you have if it means that, that i must do another video altogether where i'm just dropping files i will do that so that if there's anything that happens to any one of us who are in on this live proof will be out there they will just be taking and using whatever that they have to, to use right i think kateko here is saying many epcsa pastors are like bongani and what um the high office does is is that they just move them around they just change them around and now it seems like this is a problem which is really really like it's a, it's a serious problem internally because the way that bongani has been carrying around doing whatever that he was doing it was obvious that no listen this person knows that this is how things are done in this church there's no way out so literally the, this could mean that there are some people who are actually watching this live who are from that church who don't know which way to get out because what has been happening to Mahoto is literally what is happening to them right now and now it makes sense i do understand where you're coming from when you say listen you're going to be able to speak you're going to speak you're going to make sure that your voice is loud so that your sister can get justice and so that nobody else can ever get the same abuse that your sister endured in her marriage and um, i think elia on i don't know um if i'm mistaken you will correct me right i think zoleka was saying something about a uh, divorce ex husband with they initiating the process of divorce after the, the whole meeting that they had with the um, uh is it the headquarters where 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 they had no. this meeting the the divorce now nah? he always threatened her with the oh, divorce okay. every time she came back home he say he would say i'm coming with the divorce papers i'm coming with the divorce papers so it was a song that he always sang and my sister was also tired of it and said you know what you can do whatever you want and i've asked you even before mm. that come and do whatever that you want mm. you know and mm. uh, it's sad that even 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 when they tried to discipline him at the same uh, um the headquarters mm. they called him in to say no we also want to discipline you after whatever that happened the suspend just just during this uh, early days of the suspension mm. they called him and he wasn't picking up the phone they ended up calling the my sister the wife to say he's not picking up and he said she said I, there's nothing i can also do call the parents mm. she sent the father's uh, number and the mother's numbers and then when they called the father the father was cursing the bishops like that mm. swearing at the bishops huh. so swearing at them swearing mm. at them like hey my son i don't know but he was brutally swearing at them mm. to show that abana mola o kontlong you understand mm. and they were trying to help their son uh, the, the, his Protecting. son but he couldn't see that and he was just swearing and cursing at them at that at that moment in time mm. my sister now and i want to understand who in terms of the burial right because the same church which has betrayed and has failed mahoto is the same church who was like that was so upsetting for me because i even shared that on facebook during the day where 
the church had, had made statements to say our Yafro has passed away in loving memories of our Yafro. Let us share positive memories. Let us celebrate her life. How then did we move from them trying to get her to fix things with her husband, her not wanting anything to do with the church anymore, to them now pretending as if they were one with her and they're in support of her? And they like how how did we how, how did we get to that to where the church now all of a sudden wants to be? You, you must remember that. Uh, even even the mother herself said that they want to protect their image. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hang their dirty linens. Okay. So it, it also comes to that to say uh, that the, the church and their image is very important to them. So they can't be tarnishing their name just like that. Mm -hmm. So it goes from that. So your sister must be buried, but Bona, their image must must remain. It must be sustained. Exactly. 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 And adding on that, Kifens, remember that. Uh, as a family, we went and told them that we want to bury our own. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they pulled the marriage certificate, wow. a, a, a trick on us to say, not trick per se, but they pulled that stunt to say that, remember, they are still legally married. Mm -hmm. So we can and do mother whatever we want. Mm -hmm. You see? Because we said to them, no, because Umakoto was back home with us. So we would like to bury her, you know how was the relationship between the two. Mm -hmm. They were no longer in uh, 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 in harmony. Mm -hmm. They were no longer though legally they are husband and wife but they were no longer a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So give us our child so that we can bury her. Yay, madam. Mm -hmm. The whole house stood mm -hmm. and you know we were exchanging words. Mm -hmm. We were exchanging words and we understood to say hey, even if we can take this into the court of law we won't win because there's no protection order mm -hmm. there's nothing whatsoever that we had that mm -hmm. would prove ugutu makoto was in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. so one way or the other legally they had the right to, to, to bury her. so we saw that it was a losing battle it's fine let us just bury my sister because most of the things we we try to work on eggshells for them mm -hmm. so that we're able to to just bury her in peace mm -hmm. you know my sister name uh during the the the, the burial uh, i saw the poem part which was shared on facebook where this guy was reciting a poem it was so so emotional where he was talking on behalf like as if it's it's makoto who is talking right and as he was going in detail because literally that guy was just explaining that listen this person has been through a lot my kids i've suffered i've been i've been in the streets with you we've been chased out like literally that guy was reciting the life of Mahoto, right mm -hmm. and and there was a distraction somewhere along the way where because he was like getting right into the whole story then people started singing and, and all that stuff was it like maybe your idea to get that guy to come and recite like that or how how or is it because it yes. was public knowledge Yes, it was Utulo. It's the Tulo the Soil. Mm -hmm. He's a poet. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked him to come and, and commemorate my sister mm -hmm. uh, and make a poem. Mm -hmm. And I've explained to him to say, look, this is the story of my sister. Mm -hmm. But because you're a poet, mm -hmm. can you try to tell this story mm -hmm. for other women as well to hear and to maybe this might also try to save them. Maybe it will dawn into their heads to say, hey, because you'll never know, you know, you'll go to a funeral, attend a funeral, you see who Makoto's passing, and then it changes your mind to say, I need to run for my life here. Mm -hmm. Then I, they, they deliberately interrupted him, by the way. If you yes, can see in the, from did. the video, mm -hmm. someone went there and told them to sing. Mm -hmm. Then they I started singing so that Utula cannot be heard out loud what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a plan that Tulo should be there, the soil should be there, mm -hmm. so that she, he tells the story of Umakoto mm -hmm. to save other Abu Makoto Abanyi food. Mm -hmm. Yo, yeah, no, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. It's a good. I can imagine the way it's so heavy on me, I can imagine how it's like for you. But then the one thing that I want to know is what would be like ideally what would you love to see happening for in, in in memory of your sister what would you in an ideal world you know bearing the, the in mind the fact that your sister can never come back she's gone she's gone mm -hmm. but what would you love to see what what message would you love for us as the public to amplify for you guys so that at least you will get to mourn your sister and accept her passing justice and when i say justice justice it's in many ways madam mm -hmm. 
Justice not only on Ubongani, mm -hmm. but justice that even the government itself will look into the policies, will look into um, the running and the governance mm -hmm. of uh, these religious churches. Mm -hmm. Look deep into it and that if we are army, mm -hmm. it is that when a congregant sees that a, a, a major fro or a pastor's wife is abused, they are able to lay a, a, a charge on the pastor on their behalf mm -hmm. where with and without their consent. Because now the, the trick and, and the problem here it is that even if you see that this person is abused without his or, or their consent, there's nothing that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can you cannot lay a, a, a charge on their behalf unless they accept. Mm. So I wish those are things that can be looked into, mm. and the justice that would decide there must be a verdict mm -hmm. to say in situations like these, mm. what happens to these to these pastors? Because mm. you can't hit someone, uh, 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 abuse someone. The following morning you are standing on the pulpit, you're raising your hands and you say, "Oh my good gracious God! Mm. Oh Lord, this and this and that and the other." Mm. That's so wrong. That's so wrong. Something needs to be done. I want to scream. I want to make noise that something needs to be done. It's time that we don't turn a blind eye, but we also look into the religious churches as well. Mm. And the pastors, we look into those and pastors' wives, mm. we look into those and the justice, what justice um, are they given? Mm. Because if Umakoto would be ignored and can be ignored, so many of them are ignored. Absolutely. Absolutely. So many of them are ignored. And there's no verdict at all to say what happens to a pastor who does that. I mean, for him to change from one church to the other, that told you that he knew very well mm. that he's not going anywhere. He mm. understood. That guy knew that he's not going anywhere. He's above the law of the church, you know. He's above whatever, exactly. whatever rules they yes. use in the church. Yes. Yes. Yo. Hi, man. This is hectic. It's hectic stuff. And... Uh, Yo, I can only because I know that there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, and we're still going to be rallying behind you guys so that you can get justice for uh, Mahoto. But at the same time, I, I'm I'm more worried about the kids. I'm more worried about the kids to say in the meantime, what can we do? And I do believe that maybe probably by the end of this live, we should be able to have people who can assist. I believe yeah. Priscilla as well. I really appreciate it. I beg your pardon. I would really appreciate that to get all the help we, we can get to get the kids yes. and make, make sure that the kids are safe with us. Yeah, because I feel like that's the first thing that you need to do. And I think one of the reasons why maybe they took the kids away from you is because the kids are going to start talking. You know, the kids mm. are going to start now because obviously kids are kids. If you're going to be, how old are the kids? Seven and five. Seven the first one is seven years. The second one is five years. A boy and a girl. Yes. Cute so and brilliant. Mm. Mm. So you see how these kids are so young. If if people ask them questions, obviously they're gonna answer everything. Oh, and right yes. now, what they're gonna be doing? I beg your pardon. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying that right now because the kids are so young. The reason why they actually took the kids away from you is because they want to groom them so that they don't they they, they completely forget about what happened and then they, they just buy them and and you know manipulate the kids so that they never have to you know remember or tell anybody about anything that has happened. And I feel like it's not too late for us to actually get the help that we need for the kids to actually if they have to speak about what they saw because they did see a lot and those kids need serious attention because the traumas of, of, of watching their mother being abused and also well, not being out in the streets with their mother there is nothing that this guy can do which can ever cover up for the amount of traumas that this, this he has actually caused these kids because it's a lot you know all these things of them being thrown out with their mother them their mother being beaten up in front of them and the works you can't just forget you can't just expect kids to forget that just like that just by the snap of fingers you get what i mean so no, I do. I understand. I understand. And what you're saying that they are trying to brainwash them mm -hmm. because uh, while we we're at the grave site, the kids were not even allowed to come to us. By the way, they oh. just kept them on their side. Yes, mm -hmm. they kept them on their side. They were not even allowed to come closer to us. So I think that they knew, they planned, they, they talked as a family to say, look, after the funeral, we make sure that we take those kids. They won't have ever to see those kids. Mm. You, you see, so that's what exactly what they are trying to do. They are trying to brainwash them mm. away from us. And it's, it's impossible that they will make them uh, to forget us because those kids love us so much. They love my mother mm. so, 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 so much. Mm. So will, will they be able to take care of the kids? Because if they've been failing to take care of the kids while their mother was still alive, what's going to happen they, now to the kids? 
They want first of because all, they, it is, they, of all, this fees were paid by Uki Fence. Mm. Uki Fence was the one who made sure that the kids are clothed. Mm. Uki Fence, by the way, the guy bought her mother an SUV mm. and bought the father a Benz, mm. but he failed to maintain his own children. Mm. So how will they take care of the kids if they failed on Ubangani? They failed on the rest of the kids that that uh, 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 they they have. If you were to go into that house and you would see that it's a dysfunctional family. Mm. You will see, I said this earlier when I was interviewed, I said, I'm, I'm not judgmental, but mm. for a father to smoke that a joint and pass it to a son, sure. it, it, it gives you chills. It gave me chills. It gave me chills to say, what kind of a family is this that you would, you know, wrap it, daha, smoke it and pass it to your son as if it's nothing, it's normal. So mm. just imagine the environment that these kids will grow up in. Mm. Should they be allowed to grow up uh, 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 in that home? Mm. Or Kifenza wanted to also yes, add something. Yes, yes. She, wanted, she wanted to say something. No, no, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Mm. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. We are, we are all over the place, it's but whatever much. it is that comes to your mind, you're more than welcome to share with us. Yo, guys, it's a lot, man. Do you, to a certain degree, sis, in, I'm, I'm not, because I can obviously, we didn't do like a, a whole background story of saying, Uri, where do you come from, this, this, this and that. Um, Was your sister the only one who was actually married in the family? No, no, she's not. I'm also married. Okay, because I wanted to, I wanted to check because there, there's a series of videos that we've been doing in the past where we're talking about how you know sometimes we want to hold on too much to a marriage that's not working out because we feel like you know what there's a void that we had when we grew up so as a result I'm not gonna be like my parent so we end up uh, yes. enduring my, the my same abuse. Yes. Oh, sorry to interrupt. My no, mother no. is all is a divorcee, by the way. Mm. Yes. So I also think because I still remember there was a time when my father, when Makoto contacted my father, my father was not much into our lives. Mm. Only my aunt has uh, played a role in our, in, in our lives, my uh, mother's, my father's sister. Okay. So I still remember there was a time uh, when Makoto and I were having a conversation and I think he called my father because then my father didn't know what was happening. Mm. So he tried to bring my father into the story. To say this is what is happening. I'm going through uh, this, and he said, and she said to me after a while, she said to me, "Yo, the relief of knowing that your father was there to guard and protect you, I I felt it." Then I said to, hey, "No, I can attest to that. There was some a time when my father gave me fifty rand. As old as I am, mm -hmm. it made me so happy mm -hmm. that it was from my father. Mm -hmm. So I also believe that all that also that it contributed." into her holding on. Mm. Was it, was your father there at the funeral? Yes, he was. Yes, he was at so the funeral. It, it, it must have been. Yes, very, very and very no, it broke him. It, it broke him. It, it, the reason why it broke him so hard is because uh, just after Mato was um, booked out of hospital at Pinonim, uh, at um, Far East Hospital, my dad was he went actually went there mm -hmm. to to actually see the situation and how it was. So he traveled all the way from Kimberley to to Pinoni mm -hmm. to check what was happening and. Uh, to, to actually hear from him. That's what he told me. He said, you know what? I actually want to hear from this guy why he's uh, abusing my child so much. I know I'm not there, but why is he doing such a brutal thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So he went there and he didn't like what he saw. And uh, at the funeral, he told me, he said, you know what? This thing, it, it really broke uh, my, my, my baby because I could see that this 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 man was never going to change mm -hmm. when I was there, mm -hmm. and he couldn't even explain himself why he was doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I told him that you know what, um, I, I I I I don't want to talk any further with you, but should I hear again a case like this, I'll come back flying. Mm -hmm. Little did he know that not long, my sister actually contacted me instead of him. You know, so that I can I can actually rescue them from the streets mm -hmm. and at um at Crystal Park, at uh, one of the, the elders' house, to say, you know what, uh, I've been here for a month, and it, was, it, was, it wasn't even a month, it was a lie that it was a month, it was two months going to three months mm -hmm. that they were in the streets, you know. So it was really difficult for my father when I actually went into detail after he went, that I had to go also and step in to say, you know what, this is enough, enough is enough, and the uncles and the, and the aunts had to step in, and... Um, 
everybody had to say, you know what, Mato, it's time that you come back home. Mm. Even some of the church members that were not even biased, they even supported Mato. And for us taking her, and they said, thank you so much for coming and rescuing Mato. Mm. Even the Koza family hasn't even called or to check on the kids at least to see if they are fine, where they stay, nothing. They never cared. Mm. So I uh, thank you so much for coming and fetching Omato. We were worried and we were scared for her life. Mm. That's what they said. Mm. Yo, I so my that. father was there and he he, he really tried uh, uh, unfortunately he didn't um, but the support he had at the end for Mato, Mato really appreciated the support that he actually put out for her and she even cried about it to say you know Utatam I didn't know that Utatam would be there for me but at least I know that people actually care I said Mato you know I'm always here mm. so people we do care about you that's when she actually said, you know what, it's time to let go. Mm. Let's go home. Mm. Would you say yeah. that your sister, um, I don't know, who was who was closer to your sister before she passed? Is it so is it so? Oh, before she passed, we, we all were, but I was spending much more time with her. But you know, friends, they were calling each other all the time. Mm. The age gap between uh, myself and her, it's, it's vast. I'm oh, 10 okay. years older yeah. than, than her. So you know, friends, but she and I were young. Okay. Do, would you say that, um, before, because I know, I know with my own aunt that uh, sometimes before people pass, ne, there's a level of peace that comes you know, with, with them before they pass to say, listen, I, I have I have run my race and they start speaking things which you can literally only, they only click after they've passed away. Oh, this one, Nan Laela. Did you ever have moments like yeah. that? Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to say I didn't. I beg your pardon? I spend most, we spend most of the time, most of the time you can check my videos. I would post, make videos, and she would say to me, I love doing videos, by the way. Mm. Then she would say to me, I went, no, no, we're not the same. And you like capturing me in your videos. You always do videos. Mm. We, we had good moments. And mm. I think that's what gives me peace. It's that she was happy. You know, mm. I could see a smile. There was um, a status that she made the other time. She said, I used to be a happy girl. She posted a... a, 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 a I think it was a video or picture. Mm. Then I commented, I said to her, you'll be a happy girl again. Yeah. And every time I spoke to her, every time I would say, I love you. Mm. I love you all the time. But I don't want to lie, madam. I never saw this coming. Mm. I don't remember anything that it was a sign that one Layela. Mm. Because on the 6th of October, it was her birthday. Yeah. And we're here, Mona Mona, having fun, you know. Uh, but any sign, I'd be lying, none mm. whatsoever. You didn't see it coming. Kifenze? No, I don't think she also saw it coming that she's going. Mm. Uh, with, with me, it was quite different because an hour before she she passed on, she called me. Mm. And um, it, even during the week, she was telling me how proud she is of me. You know, I'm really proud of you. Keep going, Bazala. You know, um, so the, the, the encouraging words that she was telling me, it was, it was like, you know, yes, yes, she's tired. No, I'm, I'm really, really tired and not just physically, but spiritually tired, emotionally tired. I am actually drained, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and then on the call, she says, she called me, it was weird because she called me and said, Kifen, so how are you? Like, oh, this person we just spoke, mm. no, no, no. I just wanted to, to, to make you hear that my, my chest is open mm. because she was hardly breathing oh, yeah. the, 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 earlier when we spoke and her nose was actually, actually always clotted and she had um, a problem with the sinuses. Mm. So she said, yo, we are living for like killing it, yo. You sound so better. I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm so happy. I'm coming later on because it was Friday. I'm going home. So, you know what? I'm coming. Like, just wait. I'm coming with the excitement. And she said, no, you know what? No, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. Are you sure you're okay? I'm like, mm -hmm. no, my sister, I'm fine. But though my feet were really, really cold, standing in the sun, but I'm still cold. And I couldn't tell her that, no, I'm not feeling well because, you know, this person is always emotional. And, sure. like, I can't tell her how I feel most of the time mm -hmm. because I'll be also draining her of her yeah. own emotions, you know? So, and then she said, no, you know what? Um, Uber right. 
how's my baby doing? How on my onja numa ngobza? Oyabo asking about my baby, and she's like, no, take care of my baby. That's my baby. That's my. That's the last words from my sister. Take so, care of yourself. Take care of my baby. I am really proud of you. Those were my sister's words. Yo. And then so the my moment, sister said uh, goodbye to me. Yeah. And the moment you found her, how did you find out that she has passed? Uh, somebody from uh, my sister collapsed at um, it was Teneri, mm -hmm. She was working from a shop right, ne? So uh, we are well known from uh, Western Re High School. Mm -hmm. So one of the ladies saw saw her and that no man, this is Kifense's sister. Mm -hmm. And they know me from from a mutual friend that bakes cakes. So they're like, no man, I we know this lady. Then they tried getting my contacts. Then they eventually got my phone numbers. I actually heard before my family heard. So it broke me. It 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 it, it just oh, it broke me into a million pieces to say I just spoke to my sister. I said no, I just spoke to my sister. They said no, your sister we she just collapsed. Please call your family. Okay. Immediately when they say call your family, I immediately stood up from the office and I just called my 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 partner to say baby I need you right now. We need to go home. Mm -hmm. He understood. He left everything, dropped everything, and we drove home. Mm -hmm. I understood instantly that we should be late. Yeah. Because so my feet, immediately after I heard, sorry, immediately after I heard, my feet, suddenly, they were warm again. Mm. So, so her collapsing there was her passing? No. They okay. tried to not. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't because they tried to to to. They took they her to the, to the nearest. Care. Yes, they they tried. They took her to the nearest doctor, not knowing that that was her doctor. And then he said, "No, this is my patient. She mm -hmm. was just here, you know." And they tried to resuscitate her. He called the paramedics as well. So they really tried. They say when 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 they were busy uh, helping her, then eventually they saw her coming back. And there was the end. When she was, she came back and she took her last breath and that was it. So she passed at her doctor's office? Yes. Yes. No. Yeah, my sister. Because this other guy who usually passes at my mother's side said that uh, he saw her and she said to her, Abuti, kifelwa kimata, help me. Wow. Mm. So I think they too they they then rushed her to Gua Naren. They rushed her to uh, Naren's uh, uh, surgery. Mm. So Naren said that she he did all that he could, and they thought that I he will make she will make it. But uh, mm. that was the end. So because this this person that they rushed her to is her like her normal doctor, right? Does he have like oh, I don't know whether it's a he or a she. Is it a he? Say, say he, say Does he, he have like a record of all the appointments that your sister has ever had there and, and all the complications and all these things that she's been having as a result of her being abused? I I am not sure if Naren does have because remember that they were staying a couple and they changed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he would she would only go to Naren when she was here. Mm. Uh, at home and remember on that day that she passed away she went to a review Gunaren. Mm. so it was not long she she was just at the doctor for a review and mm. she was okay mm. she went to shop right so naren was shocked to say i man this patient was here not long ago mm. so what really changed in a slightest just like that in a minute everything changed it was not long she walked out of the doctor did did you did you maybe if you managed to get hold of her phone did she maybe have a conversation or anything with the with the husband that could have upset her and and caused her to like did you even check her phone after after um, um the whole thing happened to see what is there anything that maybe happened between the time after she visited the doctor and the time when she had to be sent back to the doctor you you're giving me wisdom yes we never checked the last conversations i don't mm -hmm. want to lie mm -hmm. but i'll look into it i'll yeah. check her phone i yeah. i didn't i don't want to lie yeah. i didn't we didn't check because we're so preoccupied that she passed on so we didn't check the last conversations thank you for that wisdom mm -hmm. i'll i'll look into it yeah. i'll check who was the last person that she she spoke uh, to because i was called while i was at work i'm not i'm working around western area to say come quickly we we need you so i didn't know that it, it was so serious mm -hmm. and when i got to the doctor then she was lying there mm -hmm. yeah because remember earlier on you said that every time when she speaks to to this guy she would always be upset and her her mm -hmm. attack she would always get these attacks and she hey 
emotions mm. would be all over the place. So that's why I'm thinking that maybe if you could just check that out, you might find that Thanks. maybe before, uh, after she visited the doctor, maybe she had a conversation with him or something like that, which actually led to her feeling the way that she was feeling. You get what I mean? Thanks, I'll do that. I'm looking should, into should that. Into. Thank you so much, madam. I'm looking into that. Thank yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to have private conversations with you ladies and, and see how much more information we can get out there. Guys, please share this um lives as much as you can, especially the one which is on YouTube because it's going to remain there. Share it as much as you can so that we can get as much help as we can for the family, for the kids, because obviously the kids are not safe where they are right now because if they were not safe when the mother was alive, how safe are they right now when the mother is not there anymore? And also for, for, for Mahoto to get justice and also to push this thing to make it so public so much that any first lady or any member of any church, it doesn't matter where this person is, any member of any church, any first lady, any wife, any husband who's facing any abuse out there, they should be able to be aware of things like this which actually happen. And also the fact that we are able to speak about them openly. They should break those boundaries. They should let, listen, Christ has already died for our sins. We don't have to suffer any more than he has already suffered. Don't let anybody manipulate you by reading things which are not there in the Bible. The Bible says God hates divorce. He does not hate a divorcee. So even if you come out of that, you are still going to live. You should be able to live for your kids. Um, I think we're going to end it here for today, ladies. Um, thank you so much for joining in. If there's going to be any other places where we can arrange for you guys maybe to get interviews and all that stuff, I will contact you and I will get my, my, my PA to be in touch with you so that in as much as we can push, we need to be pushing this um, story out there and make sure that you guys get uh, justice for your sister. I'm not going to get tired, but I'm happy that we had this conversation because at least... You know, I, I feel a little bit relieved because now that I know the people that I'm actually fighting for, because it's pointless for me to be fighting alone and not knowing whether the people that I'm fighting for really want me to, you know, speak for them or not. But you ladies being here and sharing your story with me and everybody who's watching, I really appreciate you. And I, I'm praying with you and my deepest and serious condolences. Don't give up on your sister's kids no matter what. If it is the last thing that you do, you have to fight to get those kids back. Thank you Thank so, you. so Thank much. You we, we're asking for prayers from everyone. We need them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lie. We need them. We need strength. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I even looked at my eyes. They are black underneath. Yeah. I'm really, I need strength. And thank you so much for helping us. I would wait. Thank you to you and to each and everyone. May the good Lord bless you. Keep you for us. Ah. Keep you for us. Really keep you for us. Mm, thank you so much, my sister. You're most welcome. Kifense, your parting words, my love. Okay, no, thank you so much for everything. And uh, like I said at the church that uh, God is in control and I still believe that he's still in control and he'll help us fight this battle like without him we are nothing and he'll stand before us in everything so uh, um, um, I told even my family earlier on that let's trust in God that he will lead us through all this experience and you know what uh, w without him we are nothing oh mama taught us how to pray let's keep on praying let's remind each other that and, and stand firm in our faith and mm -hmm. not look any other sides uh, you know what with everybody's help and prayers, I think uh, we are going to fight this and win this battle. Oh, God wouldn't bring us to a fight that we wouldn't conquer, you know. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for everything. And please keep on praying for us and the family mm -hmm. and for the safety of the kids and protect them, you know, up until they come back on our side. Because uh, that's the most concern as well to everybody, actually, that called me. So, um can you please, please, please help us pray and uh, fight this war for all women, not just Umar So It ends with Umar Khodzo and Naba that are in the same, same, same situation. So can we please fight? Mm -hmm. Let's fight and be victorious in this because we'll always conquer, mm -hmm. you know. So Abantana God never throws us away. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So let's not leave him as well. Mm. so thank you very much thank you thank you madam speaker thank oh, you no. to everyone that's supporting and um you know yo, it's tough i don't mm. want to lie mm. yes we sound strong but trust me we are not mm. we need help mm. as also to get through this as well yeah oh man thank you so much uh for those who are only joining in now we are 
in conversation with the two sisters of Mahozo, who we've been doing videos about her since the morning, the lady who passed away, who was, you know, the first lady of a church, um, Evangelical Presbyterian Church in the Eastern branch, who has been abused by her husband for the duration of her marriage. Her husband had to be moved from churches to churches, you know, from branches to branches because of his misbehavior, of him just being abusive towards his wife. So many times that... Um, at, 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 at certain points, they had to be, the, the, the community had to intervene and try to fight for this woman, but she'd always go back because for those who know, you know, the psychology behind uh, abuse victims of abuse and how they always go back to, to the person that is abusing them, you would understand. But yeah, we are in conversation with the two sisters of, of that lady. They are the ones who actually... Um, Blow, blew the trumpet and since the morning we've been trying to just push the story to say listen help us justice for hashtag justice for Mahoto hashtag church is not a slug haze church is not a slaughterhouse so that any person who is out there who is facing any kind of abuse in a church listen you don't have to suffer like that church is supposed to be a place of safety if you don't feel safe anymore if you don't feel like the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you anymore because of the place that you're at you need to vacate premises effective immediately and in the same breath as we are trying to just spread this word and get it out there we're trying to get help for the sisters as well we're trying to get help for the children of the the first lady of the church who has passed away because they're in the same hands of the same man who has been abusing her and we are worried about the kids and we're hoping that they get um help and also justice be served for Makoto as well and yeah thank you so much ladies for joining in we will communicate further after this if any help comes whatsoever we'll be happy to just convey everything to you if there's any other place where you need to speak and you know just raise awarenesses let's let's spread this word let's forward let's share yeah let's let's just help one another let's pray for the family as well because during this time i know that prayer prayer is you know you, you are they're probably tired because i know that when i go through stuff like this i am definitely tired i don't want nothing to do with prayer so in in this very trying times they're dependent on us for us to be able to pray for them so that they will be okay and they'll be strong and they won't give up so thank you so much ladies for joining in and um yeah we will talk all right thank you so much i'm praying for you and my deepest and sincerest condolences and also pass my condolences condolences to mama okay okay thank you thank you very much madam speaker thank you we'll do that we'll pass it to mom thank, thank you so much okay thank you thank okay. you okay. thank Alrighty. you with that being said thank you so much for joining in um let's meet on the flip side guys we were already two hours in that is like we broke the record because we never do lives for more than an hour but yeah we are here it was for a good cause we are glad that we did it i love you i'll see you on the next upload god bless you and good night Mwah. Mwah.